Hey guys. So, so if any of my theories are correct, um, that, you know, Nietzsche was not just some genius, he was actually a prophetic fulfillment, um, that five different religions basically warned us about. Christianity said a week after Nietzsche is born, Jesus will come back. Mayan said in 1844, Quetzalcoatl would come back, who basically looks like Jesus, a white bearded man. Um, the Baha'i prophecy mentions 1844. Even the Muslims have a hundred, um, a 1260 year prophecy, just very similar to the Bible, that also involves 1844. Um, basically, you know, that's, those are some of the major religions. Um, so that's one of my theories that no one else really grasps onto like me because I was I've been a Nietzschean well before I knew that stuff um, and so yeah I think that's true which means that prophecy is real I think that um, whenever um, people do psychedelics um, you know I think they're tapping into something that the government doesn't want them to know about themselves or about reality that's why natural things like cannabis and mushrooms that come from earth basically god are outlawed by our you know babylonian fascist government you know but you can have some xanax and some jack daniels and an ar-15 and you're good to go um but no marijuana is dangerous um so i mean if we all know that that's a conspiracy but at what point do you do you understand why it's a conspiracy why would they do this well it's weird that the book of timothy chapter 4 talks about in the end times people are going to speak lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared like an iron because they're outlawing certain meats and in the kjv bible it says meats but in the hebrew it's plants okay it's not pork and cows and all that stuff it's literally plants okay so the translation is wrong once again which is why we should look at the hebrew and the greek um so they outlaw our consciousness basically and they downplay astrology because they don't want you to know that there's a huge fucking World War III alignment coming up with Saturn conjunct Pluto, just like every other fucking World War with Saturn and Pluto archetypes. Um, and they, they don't want you to basically discover what's going on. If you found out that Atlantis is real and that there are civilizations well more advanced than we were tens of thousands of years ago, that would make you not have faith in the current administration or what the fuck ever. Um, because, you know, we're, our, we've done such a good job of burning the history books, and yet we still have so much concrete evidence that there were higher fucking civilizations well beyond um, what we were taught today. Um, that's why the Sphinx has water erosion on it, because it was created well before the pyramids when Egypt was not a desert land, when it was a tropical fucking rainforest over 10,000 years ago. But don't tell your teacher that. Um, and when we look at Karl Monk's The Code... All the hard math with the pyramids, Stonehenge, the Mayan pyramids, even fucking Mars corresponds to the exact mathematics that the ancients put um, on the monuments around the world. Okay, so that means we've been on Mars before or whatever civilization that was on Mars told us about it or vice versa. Um, so we were on Mars. We blew it up. That's why it's red. And... <laughs> You know, and then we came to Earth, and we're fucking it up now, and it's probably gonna blow up soon as well. So, I mean, if it, basically history repeats itself in a very literal sense, but it goes back well beyond, you know, our our, our fucking view view and perspective and viewpoint, um, or whatever. So basically, I want everyone to to really understand that the entire world is a lie. Your professors are lying to you, the teachers, and, and most of the time they're lying ignorantly. They don't know because they don't study. They just, they want to get their fucking PhD so they're going to follow every single fucking rule that says do not think. And then they get a PhD for saying that they can think good. So yeah, good luck with that. Um, the, the, the big irony of it is that even if we did know that the DMT realm was actually the afterlife, and even if we did know Atlantis existed and the drug war is a huge fake thing and all the governments, they have all the power and then people are voting away their power in America thinking no one should have guns and stuff like that and 
I mean, it's basically exactly what the prophecy says. There's going to be a falling away. People are going to want injustice, and they're going to want um, basically evil. And so that's that's what's going on. And if there, you can find me any other fucking book that says that besides the Bible, then maybe I'd look into that. But so far, like shit's it's all a script. That's why it's called scripture. Okay, it's there's there's God's plan, and then there's your puny little life thinking you can change God's plan, and that's fine. But it's not going to go anywhere, but buddy. You know, only the predestined will be raptured. End of story. Quit knocking on doors. Mormons, and only the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction are not going to be able to go to the fucking kingdom of heaven, whatever that is, okay? And when the Bible just constantly mentions astrological and astronomical references and Christians don't want to say God influences your life like that, then why does it say that there is a time to be born and a time to die? That means, I guess, the time we were born counts. And then why does Psalm 19 say... You know, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The firmament means the sky, space. It shows his handiwork. It shows Virgo the Virgin giving birth to Jesus. It shows, you know, Ophiuchus, the serpent, being struck in the head by Hercules, the good guys. You know? I mean, over and over again, that same symbolism is there. Um, but... You know, the secret societies have been so brilliant in categorizing and separating every single facet of truth that once we get into one category, we're ridiculed for studying anything else. And, you know, like, I don't know, it's, it's uh, pretty obvious. Um, excuse me. I want to basically just point out that it's okay. It's okay to be pissed. And it's okay to understand that you're living in a lie and that things could get better. But it's not okay to think that things will get better. I'm sorry, I'm not a pessimist. I'm not a half-empty kind of guy. I'm a realist, okay? Shit's not going to get better. You can't change prophecy. Something big is going to go down. And, and, you know, that's that. I don't think people have the right perspective, let alone the right knowledge, in order to keep growing. People want to go to work and come home and not be bothered. Well, I'm going to fucking bother you. I'm going to fucking haunt your dreams and your nightmares and your and your basically your brain and force you to think cuz once you see me you can't unsee me you know I mean there there's a whole lot of information on my channel that basically exposes the huge lie I mean the grocks will go into certain things and Jim Brown will go into certain corruptions I want to I want I want to combine everything I want to go into astrological corruption you know, um, telepathy being real, telekinesis being real, um, the old school shamans would affect the breeze with their thoughts and their consciousness. And it's no wonder that Nietzsche, you know, he wrote many letters to his friends saying how he was scared that lightning would hit him because of his amazing emotional thoughts. He literally says that in his letters. This is before he went crazy. He's a perfectly normal-minded fucking genius professor professor individual who was asking his physics professor friends what kind of chains or clothing he could wear so he wouldn't be hit by lightning, okay? This guy was a shaman. He was affecting nature, and because of his atheistic beliefs of, you know, willpower, Superman, and all that, it taught him not to attribute any of his spiritual gifts to a higher source. And, you know, that's the naivete on his part. But it's a necessary step. We can go beyond him and say, hey, he was actually doing what God planned. You know, God created the atheists, okay? Uh, and God creates the prophets who don't think they're prophets or who are anti-God, in fact. Because Nietzsche, of course, wrote the Antichrist and how the Christian religion is about suppressing your consciousness instead of heightening it. But then again, he was raised with a fucking minister church. So, of course, you're going to think the church... Uh, father. He was, his father was a minister. So, of course, you're going to hate religion if your father's that. Okay? You're not going to be objective. You're not going to study it on your own. Okay? I'm not saying Nietzsche didn't fully know the Bible. I'm saying he doesn't know what the Bible means to us in 2018. What has been fulfilled so much more than it was in, you know, the 1880s. So, basically... Um, he, he's kind of an anti-hero, but he's a hero, okay? And, and when we, um, if we just, 
We just take the time. That's all that's all I ever say is just take the fucking time. And then we can understand what's going on. But people either get bored, they didn't have interest in the first place, they're too tired from their jobs, they don't have enough money, so they just they spend what they can on food and, you know, chains and nice clothes. Instead of a $5 fucking book that'll tell you how nice clothes and chains and all that shit is unnecessary. Um, so we basically created a culture of fucking wimps and a culture of fucking fascists, you know. You, we hate those who hate. Well, that's a good way to show your love. But at the same time, you know, when, when you see a, a hippie put a flower in a rifle barrel to stop war, you know, all you need is love to stop evil. Well, actually, love didn't stop the Nazis. A couple of good guys with guns stopped the Nazis. Okay, it wasn't a handshake and a fucking kumbaya session and, you know, like smoking a joint and having a good time that stopped it. It was brute fucking force, unfortunately. And you're going to have to use brute fucking force to save your kid's life from a killer or to save your life from a killer or to save your, your significant other's life from a killer. It's going to take, sadly, brute force. Gee, just like nature intended. Okay, yeah, rabbits in Mother Nature might not be murderous, but they're going to do whatever they have to do to get away from the fucking dog. Whether it jump over something and know the dog can't do it and, and then the dog dies, okay, well, the rabbit survives. Is the rabbit evil? Is a tiger evil for killing a fucking antelope? No. It's, it's just nature, okay? It's all about intent. And intent in quantum physics, as we know, is much more... Observing is much more important than the observed object, okay? And people uh, have a hard time studying quantum physics because physicists, it turns physics on its fucking head. But New Agers love quantum physics because it says the New Age in consciousness is more powerful than matter. So anyway, it's just a big fucking joke. And y'all have a good one because I got to go back to work.